Monitor. On today's program, we're discussing confidence games and scams of all kinds, those that are perpetrated against ordinary citizens. What we're going to show you right now are games that indeed are being perpetrated on public transportation in and around the city of Chicago, such as the Shell Game and Three Card Monty, games that have been around for a very long time but are still being practiced and are still duping large numbers of people. We have an individual with us today who's very qualified to discuss those kinds of games. He's a sleight of hand artist and an entertainer at the Bit of Magic, a restaurant on the south side of Chicago. His name is Glenn Bishop. Glenn, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Sleight of Hand. Uh, I started to work out in the magic shop by the Lowell Chicago Amusement Park, and uh, that was out in Bolingbrook. And the general manager of Old Chicago was a Sleight of Hand artist from Atlanta, and he's one of the top card men in the country. So he became coming down to the shop and started to teach me magic. That's very interesting. Uh, Tell me about uh, the first game that you're going to show us. Well, I've always loved the old-time swindles. Now, this is a classic, and it goes back to the early days of the Riverboat Gamblers. It's called the Old Three Shell Game. There's three shells and a small sponge, which is called a pea. Now, the idea is when the three shells are mixed up is you have to watch which shell contains the pea. If I were to mix them up, you have to watch which shell contains the pea. Go ahead, which one? Right, now that's not very hard, because there are three shells and one pea. Again, though, if I were to mix them up, you have to watch which shell contains the pea. Go ahead, which one? I tell you what, let's start all over again. <laughs> That's incredible. But I'll, I'll, I'll catch you the next time. You'll catch me the next I'll tell you what, sometimes what'll happen is the con man will try to up the odds or as far as the money, and what'll happen is, is he'll add something like a glass. And what he'll say is, now I have a glass here, sir. I'll cover the shell and give you a an easier chance. Watch the pea. If we cover it with a glass, if I mix it up, now he'll get you again. Some people say it's over here or in the center. Where would you say it is, sir? It has to be under the glass. Underneath the glass. Let's take a look. Amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. Hoisted by your own petard is what they say. <laughs> this is called the bust out bluff, and this is another one of those sucker moves, okay? Watch the pea. The more you watch, the less of a chance you get. There's the pea. If we mix them up, you have to watch which shell contains the pit. Again, which one? I'll start all over again. You did it to me again. Yeah. Now, one of the really interesting things that Bruce mentioned at the beginning of the program, as far as we were talking about the shell game, the new way to do it today is with bottle caps. Now, it's the same trick, the same move, the same cons, but it's also done with bottle caps. If I mix them up again, which one has the pit? We'll start all over again. We'll do it one-handed this time. Now the piece starts inside the center bottle cap. Now whichever way I move the bottle caps, it stays in the center bottle cap. But if I mix them up, again, which one? <laughs> the hand is quicker than the eye. That's great, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned at the opening, uh, these games are actually being done on public transportation in the city of Chicago. On the L's, the, 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 the buses. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of times they'll be done uh, just wherever anyone has a time kill. Uh, it's basically done all over. I've been in New York walking down a major uh, intersection and I've seen people with card tables and they'll be doing this at a busy uh, crossing where hundreds of people pass by. Um, have you seen that done in Chicago? I've seen it done a couple of times in Chicago. Chicago with the shells. I was up in Ripon, Wisconsin, all the way up in Ripon, Wisconsin, doing a grand opening for a store, and uh, I saw a guy doing it with thimbles. Three small little thimbles, and it's the same trick with the bottle caps, but he was doing it with thimbles, and he was using the same moves, and people were going for it. They were putting out hundreds of dollars. Obviously, um, I've tried to uh, uncover your trickery mm -hmm. by standing here very close to you, and we've talked a little bit of before the program, and I've been unable to do that. So it's very obvious that people who see this game being done anywhere mm -hmm. should avoid getting involved with it because it's impossible to catch the individual if he's good. Is that true? Uh, it's very hard to catch the individual. One of the reasons is because they use people in the audience. As a magician, I would call them a stooge, but a con man would call them a shill. Okay? Somebody in the audience will do a fake or they'll be signaling this person in the audience. Like, for example, 
Now there's the P. If I mix them up and I decide to put the P under a certain shell, I'll signal my partner where it is, okay? For example, it's underneath the shell, so I'll signal my partner by placing my right hand on the table. Now he knows where it is, and that's very important, because if you guess which one it's under, he can cut in and make a bet on it, and that way I don't lose any money. The money's going to my partner. I see. Yeah. That's interesting. And it's the same type of thing. You, in other words, sometimes the signal is, for example, if it's underneath this shell or underneath this bottle cap, I'll put my left hand on the table, and that way he knows exactly where it is. Or if it's under the center, both hands are off the table. Where is it? So my partner knows exactly what's going on and where I decide to put it. It's very interesting. So people have to be very aware of the kinds of trickery that people who do these kinds of things uh, use. Yeah, they're, they're after your money. Show us uh, the uh, card uh, one. That was very okay. interesting, too. Now, an outgrowth of the shell game is a uh, three-card money. Now, this basically, the history of this came up from Mexico, from what I understand, or at least from what I've read. The same idea, three shells and a P. Instead, we have a queen and two red tens. Now the idea is when the three cards are mixed up is to keep your eye on the queen and ignore the red tens. Again, if I were to mix them up, now obviously if you're watching, it's over here, right? Uh, I would say here. Well, I'm trying to tell you how the game works, okay? Let's start all <laughs> over again, okay? I'll do it one-handed, watch, very slowly. This is slow motion. 10, queen, 10, slow motion. Where is it? We'll start all over again. This is getting very frustrating, Glenn. Okay. I'm glad I don't have any money uh, bet okay. on this. This is something that's really rarely seen. Watch. Two red tens and a black queen. Again, if I mix them up, watch the black queen and ignore the red tens. Okay, now this is like the shell game. Again, what you see is not what you get. Fascinating. Yeah, the hand is quicker than the eye. One of my favorite games as far as the con man, again, he'll use a, a, a shill in the audience. What'll happen is, is he'll bend up a corner. Okay, now the crowd thinks, I can win some money on this because I know exactly where that is. I see that corner bet, okay? Now, what'll happen is, the cards will be mixed up a few times. For example, we'll play it like as if it's a game. Okay, where would you say it is, sir? Okay, it's the bent up corner, okay? Again, we mix them up. Keep your eye on the black queen. Again, where would you say it is, sir? Okay. Now this person that's guessing it would be my shell, the person that bent up the corner. Now the game starts turning. Red card, red card, and the black card. Now if I mix up the three cards, keep your eye on the black and ignore the reds. Again, keep your eye on the black, ignore the reds. Now the shell leaves. The person sees the corner still bent up. He reaches into his pocket, gets out his money and say, hey, let's put the money down where I think the card is. Where would you say it is? Okay. <laughs> Glenn, are the cards always bent? Well, most of the time, as far as the bend of the cards, the reason for that